welcome to the Teaching Innovation Podcast. I'm your host, David Lebourg, Learn Institute France, and today I'd like to talk about distance learning, not its technical aspects, which we will review later on in another podcast, but rather let's reflect together on the psychological impact distance learning has had on students, teachers, families. And to shed some light on the subject, I have the pleasure to host Wukash Tomczyk, Doctor in Educational Science and Head of Research Group specialized in media education at the Pedagogical University of Krakow in Poland. Wukasz. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry, hello. Um, dzień dobry, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, hi. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we have so much to discuss, but uh, if you don't mind, I would like you to start with introducing yourself. Uh, just a few words um, at the beginning. I, uh, I'm uh, uh, working at the Pedagogical University uh, in Poland. Uh, I represent the biggest uh, state uh, institution. Uh, we are focused on um, training uh, of uh, pre-service teachers and uh, also in-service teachers. And now, as you know, uh, like another educational institution, uh, we do all the best uh, to, to, to train our uh, students, uh, but we are working, uh, of course, uh, online. So, and what are you working on at the moment? Um, at the moment, we try to collect some data. We have a lot of educational and research projects, but we have a two directions. One direction is the, is the um, paradigm of positive media education. It means uh, how we should uh, work with ICT or another electronic devices equipment and how to implement these devices uh, to improve uh, quality of education. And the second paradigm, the second uh, uh, way of our research is a negative paradigm and negative consequences. Um, when we're thinking about the negative impact, ICT, smartphones, computer, tablets uh, on individual life or group life, for example, of adolescents, uh, that we try to merge positive and negative sides of ICT. Okay, and it's always linked to what happens in the classroom, or is it in general? Yeah, obviously also in a classroom, but um, of course also in uh, uh, general uh, non-professional life, uh, in, for example, peer relation, home environment. Uh, yeah, but it's because we are living in information society and we should not create the borders uh, now between uh, professional life and uh, private life. It's, 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 it's methodological mistakes. We are living in information society by using our services in, uh, in, in this two sphere. Okay, and what kind of negative impact did, did you find in, um, in the classroom for the students? Related uh, you're thinking you're thinking about the COVID time or in general now? In... Well, co COVID time or in general? Well... Yeah, uh, maybe you know, maybe not. Uh, in Europe, we have a big uh, research network, you kids online. Uh, head of this research network is Professor Sonia Livingston, uh, David Schmahel, uh, and among others. Um, uh, Polish team from my university um, conduct a really big research uh, among pupils, among youths, how they use uh, ICT smartphones on their life. And we find, we find a few interesting things uh, on, for example, FOMO, kind of um, internet addiction, about cyberbullying, about sexting, about uh, digital piracy, about the protection of image on internet. And uh, this phenomenon exists also before COVID time. And some of these negative consequences uh, of using ICT also we observe now like cyberbullying, uh, but not cyberbullying only addressed, and, uh, addressed on direction of pupils, but also 
uh, focus on uh, teachers. Yeah, this is a, one of the example uh, of negative consequences. And did, did you see any kind of uh, things getting worse because of, um, of the fact that students stay at home instead of the classroom? Uh, yeah, we find a few negative consequences. Uh, uh, but I think, in my opinion, um, the most important thing now is a um, overload by information because pupils are still online and we find some factors that FOMO increasing now than before COVID time. FOMO is fear of missing out. It's oh, acronym okay. of uh, 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 some kind of internet addiction. But we know at this stage that internet addiction is not official kind of sick like of another kind of sick like cancer or something like that. But this is a kind of problematic uh, uh, internet uh, using, kind of problematic style of using internet and for example uh, our pupils i try to be on touch i try they try to be still online they try to get more and more new information they are almost still uh, online uh, for example before uh, covid time uh, it's this process is really close to the a uh, change of well-being because they still thinking what happened on the internet not only on classes but also on on the content in uh, social network sites facebook instagram tiktok and among others and i think overload by information is uh, one of the most visible uh, factor when thinking about how the covid change our style of using uh, new technology, new media. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because recently I just read a book about uh, kind of addiction online. And uh, the author was uh, talking about the fact that um, um, the, 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 the change in behavior, in attention was uh, amazing between like in 15 years, Uh, he gave the example of a goldfish was like nine seconds of uh, attention. And now students have eight seconds of attention online. So they're like quickly moving, as you said, moving from one, one piece of information to the other. Yeah, we also find uh, another um, interesting information before COVID time, I don't know, 10 years ago, we start to uh, try to understand the phenomenon of multitasking. Obviously, yeah. everyone yeah. Uh, working uh, in this... I would say in the same time, but it's not the same time because we switch our attention. Uh, but multitasking now is, a, you know, pupils do some homework or contact with peers or contacting with uh, teachers at the same moment, uh, for example, that they text to, to the peers, to another peers. They try to um, download some information. Uh, they watching what happened on social network sites. And they are not focused on the uh, one process, but they really quickly switch the attention. Uh, from the cognitive perspective, uh, it's not so good because this process not support uh, self-regulation, uh, mm -hmm. focus attention. And we don't know what happened if you still Uh, switch your attention. What happened in the next 10 years, 15 years? How the person who are now youths will be working in the next uh, few decades? We are from the analog uh, time. Mm -hmm. Our um, childhood was in, in <laughs> uh, were located in different uh, condition. Uh, we are digital, partially digital migrants, like majority of the teachers. And this digital mi migrants uh, uh, are working uh, now with uh, digital autochthons. And this is a two different generation. And we also try to understood some negative phenomenon close to the you know switch attention uh, uh, and, and 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 these negative consequences, as I say before, um, which we listed on uh, Yuki's online uh, online report. And what's funny because you, you mentioned the, 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 the pupils, but on well, also the adults. I read that, for example, uh, the average um, day for an American was like 30 hours in a day. 
So seven hours for sleeping, seven hours for working, then social time, and then 12 hours on screens and everything. And when you add up, it, it, uh, well, it totals 30 hours a day, which is completely crazy. It means even adults are multitasking. Yeah, this is uh, one of the methodological problem, how to define internet addiction. Officially, mm -hmm. internet addiction uh, not exists like a type of sick, official sick. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. not the um, official, me uh, official mental uh, problem. Due yeah. to the fact, as you mentioned, uh, it's really hard to find the criteria, time criteria. Because, because if you ask somebody, for example, five years ago or 10 years ago, if your colleagues or you uh, using ICT four hours by day, it's a high number or small number. It should be uh, merged with uh, red light that something happened wrong or it's normal uh, process. Or, and 10 years ago or five years ago, everyone uh, uh, said mm, four hours, uh, it's, it's really hard number, but now, when everything is uh, transformed into internet, yes. four hours, six hours, it's something normal and something regular. The criteria of using ICT is changing. I don't want to say in a positive uh, way, but the time is increasing uh, in a vis in, in, in visible uh, perspective that we are still more and more uh, online. Also, adults, when we're thinking about the negative um, phenomenon of internet, we should not only focus on adolescents and youth, but also thinking about, for example, parents, teachers, because we are modeling behavior of our pupils. They observe us and they're still watching. If we are still online, if we are still using the smartphone, they will be uh, replicate the same behavior. It's a simple way. Uh, for modeling of behavior. Which is even even more complicated now because uh, some countries uh, are on distance learning now. And so you, as a teacher, you require students to use screens, but for the good, for the good reason. Yeah, this is a kind of paradox. Uh, ah, you are from France. Okay, one um, example from France. Uh, president, I, I think it's President Macron banned smartphones on school. I read some title on newspaper. Mm -hmm. I don't know it was uh, three years ago or two years uh, ago. But now a lot of pupils using smartphone at home environment to learn, to 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 to, to download information from a website, from email, and this is a paradox because two years ago smartphone has been banned at school, yeah. and now. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, young learners using smartphone like basic uh, learning environment due to the fact that they are partially digital divided they don't have for example i don't know modern equipment like modern pc or something like that. yeah they don't have computers they just like when we did like distance learning the first thing they did uh, we had to adapt the lessons uh, for smartphones yeah, so yeah, you have to make sure that everything you sent was readable on smartphones, not on computers. Just... Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the uh, paradox when we compare uh, before COVID time and uh, current situation. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you because, um, well, we know each other a little bit because we've been working on uh, writing a project on distance learning, and I came across some of the works you published uh, just before the pandemics. Uh, we mentioned it yesterday together, and uh, uh, I had so many questions. And the first one was, um, what do you think as a teacher I should focus on before, during, and after virtual session with, uh, with my students? Uh, oh, uh, it's a really complex uh, question. Uh, first of all, it's content. I, I, I would not, um, because we have a, a phase when teachers start, when, okay, when the lesson, uh, when we try to prepare to the lesson, we uh, start to thinking about the content. We start to think about the content. And first of all, we should not overload our pupils, uh, not only our pupils, but also uh, by uh, uh, teachers, not over, overload themselves by, by the content. It's, we are now, in the not regular e-learning uh, time period, it is still crisis e-learning. 
emergency e-learning. It's another kind of rule uh, that determinates some process in e-learning. Uh, because for just simple facts, 85% nah, um, of, for example, Polish teachers, mm -hmm. and I have a similar data from Czech Republic and also from Slovakia, uh, they didn't have any experience uh, with e-learning before COVID time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, only, f okay, they have an information that e-learning exists, it supports a learning process, for example, in adult education and andragogy, but they don't really, didn't use this kind of solution in the regular work. And in one year ago, in March, they transform, <laughs> you know, all uh, learning environment to uh, simple e-learning platform, mm. uh, like Teams, like Moodle, and it was something, and they tried to replicate offline behavior from class to e-learning platform. And this it, is, I, I think, yeah. uh, it, it, it doesn't work. This is another uh, um, tip or advice that uh, we should thinking about which content is the most important and what kind of content we should, uh, you know, include to the uh, e-learning emergency curricula. Uh, curricula. And uh, yeah, not overload. I think this is the first uh, advice. So like less, less is more. Less is, less is more, less is better. And also uh, thinking about the problem with uh, um, cognitive process, with concentration, with uh, pay attention. Uh, we should know that um, uh, passive method of teaching, mm -hmm. uh, okay, we should use passive method of teaching, but uh, we should uh, share, for example, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and change style of teaching. Also really useful will be flipped learning uh, or similar uh, kind of uh, uh, teaching uh, and learning uh, methods. So just, to, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, just to, to, make, to make sure I understand, what do you call passive method? Uh, when teacher only, uh, when teacher uh, is a um, talking head, it okay. means when uh, teacher only talk, talk and talk and not thinking about the feedback, uh, about, about the feedback, obviously from the uh, pupil's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think teach passive methods is it's quite good it's good to introduction it's yeah. good to yeah. summarize something it's good to uh, um, put the new information or systematize something but not to uh, use this form of uh, teaching method uh, by the whole um, whole lesson yeah. uh, yeah, and also flipped learning is uh, quite good when we give and uh, give a task and the pupils collect some um, information, some data, but not by the simple way, copy and paste from internet, but do, learning by doing, uh, search some information in offline sphere. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really working and it's really useful in this crisis time. And what do you advise because I, um when I went to like my virtual session, uh, plenty of my students didn't show up, meaning they showed up, but they didn't interact with me. And I was like, okay, what should I do? Should I go and get them? Should I, should I leave them alone? Because as you said, it's not normally learning, it's, it's crisis e learning, and maybe it's pretty stressful for them. So I wasn't sure what, what to do. Uh, should I for, kind of force them or nudge them to participate? Uh, first of all, it should be, in my opinion, uh, it should be doing step by, step by step. At the beginning, give them some really simple, uh, short task and just a little bit force them to you know, step by step, simple task, mm -hmm. uh, okay. more harder and, and the hardest. And uh, obviously we are responsible, we are teacher that uh, we have also our pedagogical, pedagogical intuition that we should from time to time force our uh, pupils to some activities to receive educational, um, to pass the educational aims. 
because each our meeting uh, should um, feel we should get some results, some new knowledge, new competence, uh, new attitudes uh, among our learners and we are responsible. But step by step, they sh should also feel safe when they do something wrong. Exactly. Uh, we will not criticize, but we will try to... It's emergency. But I, I, I have some idea that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of teachers now check the pedagogical pedagogical um, core uh, of professional. It means that if they are really bad teachers, really wrong, really bad teachers in offline sphere, they will be not a good teacher in online sphere. Because if you have a good contact with uh, your pupils, you will be also a good teacher in uh, online sphere. But of course, this online uh, sphere generate a lot of challenge. I, I don't wanna use problem word, challenge, I would say better is challenge. For example, that um, in our perspective, a lot of teachers say that our pupils not switch on the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know what are they doing. Uh, they are online, but they are doing something different. Uh, for example, they are communicating by Discord, they are playing game, they are not really on uh, a learning process. But in formal education, of course, we have uh, some um, tools to check if they are really active learners or they are doing something else. For example, in Poland, um, some of teachers, if you are not active, if you not send the task, you are invited to school. Uh, you are pupil, you are invited to school. Okay. And of course, the um, pandemic standards are keep it, mm -hmm. uh, like mask, like you know, cleaning hands, like distance. And uh, you have a normal conversation face to face with your teacher uh, after the you know e-learning lesson mm -hmm. in school in building. Uh, what happened? Why you are not active? Maybe the teachers go to in formal education, in primary education, to to parents and ask what happened that uh, your children not active. And this is we have a traditional uh, solution, and uh, I think smart teacher uh smart teacher from offline sphere will be also smart teacher in online in emergency crisis but we should keep in mind that uh, average of for example teachers in central eastern europe is over 40. there are not digital out of tones the digital literacy of this group of teachers is every day every month every time is better is growing uh, but they have a special kind of uh, digital competences. Not all, obviously, but we should also keep in mind that this, this is another generation of internet users. But you see, it's, uh, it's funny because in my school, um, um, pretty young teachers, they're really good at you know, creating YouTube channels, uh, video capsules, everything. Honestly, they were amazing. But the tricky challenge we had, uh, we also had the problem with connection because we have a specific kind of public and they didn't have the well they didn't want to switch on the cameras because they, they were ashamed of where, where they live for different mm -hmm. reasons and when you talked about challenges um I, and i love the fact that you required you know students to 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 get back to school to the physical space of the classroom because well you don't know and you don't Maybe, maybe they're playing video games, or maybe you don't know. Mm -hmm. That was that was the big challenge we had, and um, yeah, yeah, and uh, of course the another challenge. Uh, just a little bit discuss uh, uh, about it. Over ten percent of pupils at the first stage of crisis e-learning after. Uh, March 2020, they are missing. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, they were not online. We don't know what happened, but now we have uh, data that they, they, they have equipment. They have a low uh, quality of internet connection. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they also have a big level of shame where they live. Also, they some problems from family environment. If you connect, if you're visible, are also visible. You know, this is some soft uh, some soft factors that determine that over third person of pupils they are not online but now it's uh, as far as better and uh, yeah but it, we, we still have a challenge with digital uh, divide because in small villages some of pupils have really a low uh, quality internet uh, connection and it's still a challenge uh, everyone discussed a few, few years ago the problem of problem digital divide uh, didn't exist in Poland, but this pandemic time checked the situation, a really deep, deeper che check and um, uh, it's not true. A lot of countries, also countries with high income, uh, have this kind of problem. Yeah, I think I think it went everywhere like this. I mean, I read articles about uh, the US, uh, Germany, uh, everywhere we had at some stage, well, there are people with, uh, I don't know, the modest background, they don't have the equipment. And that's why I would like to bounce back uh, with what you said about literacy, IT literacy. Uh, it took me, for example, a while uh, to master, you know, the Zoom connection, the, um, the Moodle and everything. And you have some technicalities you can use, for example, to, you can have a background a neutral background and you can accompany the, the students to say, okay, uh, I know who you are. I know you, you're not lazy. I know, I know you're not playing video games. It's just a matter of, I don't know, being uncomfortable with uh, where you live. Put the background. Uh, I will explain it to you. And that's, that's also something that, well, teachers had to evolve, you know, compared to the formal education. Uh, yeah, it's true. But at the beginning, um, I have some data because I try to analyze uh, teacher statements uh, from March uh, uh, last year to current time. And I screen over a few thousand of teacher statements mm -hmm. about the um, problem. And one of the main category that they mentioned was a technical problem. At the beginning, uh, our uh, teachers uh, they also have a problem how to use in a correct way software and hardware how to how to con how to um, set uh, for example background uh, they at the beginning they learn this basic uh, issue also uh, including pupils they also try to uh, you know to, to, to find some solution but they are more smarter they are more uh, they have a better digital literacy. Uh, they're using software in more orientative um, uh, way. And uh, of course, when please imagine situation when you receive uh, some complicated e-learning pl platform. Moodle is a highly complicated learning environment. Yeah. It's really hard uh, for the beginners uh, to create a lesson to invite the pupils. When we're comparing with another uh, e-learning platforms like, for example, uh, Teams or our, because we create also e-learning uh, platform from beginning, it's a, the name of the platform is Smart Ecosystem for Learning and Inclusion, Sally platform. And we know how it's difficult to create in a simple way uh, a lesson, how to secure the content uh, on e-learning platform. Uh, how to not overload of IT systems. In the beginning of pandemic time, a lot of platform doesn't work because they were overloaded by the high number of users. Uh, these technical problems uh, were, was really visible uh, on teacher statements. Mm, yeah, this is one of the key and basic uh, thing when we discuss about the crisis e-learning. And, and now, because, well, um, as you said, it's, it's already been one year that we're in a crisis situation. Um, we, we tend to come back to the physical space of the classroom. And I wanted to ask you, that was my, my last question for you, is like, did you have any feedback on, um, on the psychological impact distance learning had on students? Because my, my example, we got back, so we went to distance learning. 
then now we got back to the physical space of the classroom. And I found it hard for students to get back to the role of being a student. And I don't know if it was kind of an, a psychological impact of, um, of the pandemic or something else, some, some other reason. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, uh, when I ask my students, um, press service teachers, are you interested back to university now? Please imagine the situation when the university will be um, reopened and what happened. And a uh, majority of my students said to me that mm, it's not a good solution because at the beginning it was hard, but now it's okay. We are at home and uh, for adults it's uh, not it's, it's, it's also not so easy back to uh, physical uh, physical space. But uh, um, what is the most important thing when we're thinking about the formal education? It's not only transfer of knowledge, mm -hmm. it's obviously also important, but the pure relation. I think uh, when we compare results, uh, uh, how the changing uh, life of um, adolescents, youths, uh, and what is the the, 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 the most uh, missing thing now? It's a peer relation, uh, offline, face-to-face -face peer relation. And education in school is mostly about the contact, contact about the create soft skills like a communication, cooperation, uh, like uh, you know some interaction in the physical space. It's, it's really uh, missing, and we, we find some data that well-being goes down uh, due to the fact that this important factor is missing, pure uh, relation. And I think uh, if the if they are still online, they will be have a big challenge, big problem to uh, be offline uh, because you know smartphones, unlimited data transfer. Uh, after the one year, they create a lot of habits uh, really close to FOMO, really close to internet addiction, and I, I think that. And of course, some teachers. Uh, after the one year of hard work on internet uh, will be not prefer um, digital didactic aims. Now we have the first results that uh, will exist the group. They are absolutely, uh, they create a lot of negative attitudes uh, to internet tools and they are overlooked by internet, by e-learning, obviously not all. Uh, but uh, we also find some change accord, uh, according to uh, style of working with pupils by uh, using ICT. This is also changed. We should thinking not only about the pupils, but also about the teachers, how ICT cre rework, recreate uh, attitudes, style of using new media. And after the one year, we know that we are more and more online, and this is a challenge. We should, when we back to school, we should um, create a new educational program uh, to support analog skills, analog competences with self-regulation uh, to understood also how to new media changed our behavior. And uh, yeah, that's it. So does it mean that um, teachers now are getting back to kind of, well, formal education without ICT? I mean, they're like... Yeah, I think when the, this uh, pandemic time will end, a lot of teachers uh, will not use ICT in formal education. Mostly teachers who... Um, have some bad experience like uh, cyberbullying, uh, like uh, technical problems. Uh, they will prefer more uh, analog didactic aims, analog didactic forms than digital um, digital um, digital tools or digital uh, solution. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happened. Uh, but also, I would say that this time is a, the huge experiment. 
I don't remember this kind of educational experiment before 10, uh, 20 years ago. It's something, it's a special time. And I think it's a milestone uh, for changing, for improve the education. Of course, a lot of teachers um, learn a lot of from this pandemic time and will be more openers for uh, ICT tools. Majority of this group is located in a uh, younger group of uh, teachers. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it will be a also border, but uh, it's a good time to understand how we should thinking about the future teachers, about the future education, uh, because maybe uh, maybe it's uh, absolutely the best lesson for us to understand that it's not a return way. We will be still online and more and more online. We are living an information society without options to back to analog uh, sphere. Yeah, something has changed forever. To be honest, something has changed forever. I suppose we'll, we'll have to live with the digital um, learning, distance learning, and uh, we'll have to find in the future kind of a compromise between virtual session and, and the classroom. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I think, the big, uh, the biggest uh, right. task yeah. for, yeah, for okay. us. Well, Lukas, thank you very much for the interview. I uh, really appreciated the content and the, the food for thought you gave us. Amazing. Uh, see you around. Take care. And, uh, well, I, I think we have the results in two weeks for our project. So fingers crossed. Let's yeah, see. fingers crossed. And uh, we are similar because we're thinking about um, uh, how to improve the quality of education. And uh, this is a general aim, uh, for example, from my perspective, because we're doing a research to improve the education, to improve the relation, to improve school, to improve non-formal education. And our project also will improve some small piece of uh, primary education. I keep fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, See you around. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Well, and this is it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this episode of the Teaching Innovation Podcast. I'm your host, David Lebour, Learn Institute France. Uh, if you're interested in the works by Wukash and his colleagues, you can check our Facebook page, Learn Institute. You, sh you should also definitely check out our website, www.learninstitute.net. I'm sure you will find all the trainings you and your team need. Last but not least, don't hesitate to leave some uh, comments or give us some feedback about the video on YouTube or on, fa on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>